Hey watch friends, today we're going to be taking a look at a debut offering from a new micro brand. This is Nordic Marine Instruments and this is their Oostersoon. While the brand itself might be new, the folks associated with it are well established in the industry with names like Watch Bandit as well as RZE Watches. This one, as of time of publishing, is already live on Kickstarter, so if you'd like to learn more, I'll of course have a link down in the video description. This is going to ship in a single cork watch roll, similar to ones we've looked at in the past, so I don't have it here to check out today. Getting into the basic specs, on my calipers, measured from roughly the 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock position, this is coming in at 40.2 millimeters. The bezel steps down ever so slightly, coming in at 39.9 millimeters. The lugs are a strap change friendly 20 millimeters. The lug to lug is a reasonable 48.1 millimeters. The total thickness, including the sapphire crystal, is only coming in at 12 millimeters. Not too bad at all for a dive style watch. As far as the crystal, it is a flat sapphire crystal and it does feature an inner AR coating. The movement. This is beating away with a Miyota 90S5. In case you're not familiar with the 90S5, it's essentially a more premium version of the well-known, already premium, 90, uh, 9 series movements, so the 9015 and 9039. As you can see, it's going to be a no-date configuration for it. it. has a little more decoration, but otherwise, it is going to be basically the same specs that you would get from a 9015 or 9039. Around 42-hour power reserve, automatic, high beat, 28,800 beats per hour, hacking, hand-winding, all that kind of good stuff in the same reliability that you've come to expect from that, those 9 series movements. The water resistance is coming at 200 meters or 20 atmospheres, plenty respectable for a dive style watch. As far as the weight, size to my 6.5 inch wrist, this is coming in at 150.1 grams. Not too bad there, I'd put it smack dab in the middleweight category, definitely not one that's going to disappear on the wrist, but at the same time, it doesn't weigh you down either. So now that we have that out of the way, let's get a better feel for the intricacies of this watch, as well as what it's like to live with. This is available in four color options. You have, of course, the white that we're looking at today. There's additionally a dark blue variant, a light blue variant, as well as a dark green coloration. Each of these is going to feature this carved type dial texture. To me, it evokes kind of a cracks, uh, cracks in ice or piling up snow, and it's a really cool touch and feature. As far as this particular white variant, the final execution or the production version, because this is a prototype we're looking at today, will have a little more of a frosted coloration. It already, I think, is, a, is attractive, and I think adding that frost effect will only, uh, will only improve that, so I'm excited to see that happen. As far as the overall layout, at the 12 o'clock position, this has one of the nicest applied logos that I've ever seen. Really nice crest for that. Below that, you have the Nordic Marine Instruments printed name, and then down at the 6 o'clock, you have two lines of text with the Ostersund, as well as the uh, water resistance. As you move out towards the perimeter, you're going to notice that this has a recessed chapter ring, and that's a cool effect. Not only does it add some depth and kind of layering to it, but it really um, sets it apart as far as with the printing, lays that down in so you still have the legibility, but it keeps from distracting from what is otherwise uh, could be a busy dial with having all that texture. So I think that's really well incorporated. As far as the hardware, the handset is what I would describe as somewhat of a Dauphine type shape, blunted on both sides for that. It is nicely faceted, and with those facets, they have polished accents, but they have very clean brushing applied down the middle, and I like the way that that interplays with the light. I think that's well done. As far as the second hand, this is going to be an, uh, an arrow tip, and then it does have a color accent to help for uh, visual legibility there. And then on the counterbalance side, you do have an anchor uh, as well, which is, again, another nice visual touch to that. The markers themselves are going to be trapezoidal in shape. They do also have polished facets, which I think incorporates well with the handset and the touches there. One of the things that's really cool, though, is with having that recessed chapter ring, they actually step that down so the uh, indexes or the markers, they are actually cut down into that chapter ring as well. So they actually kind of raise up out of there and then ride over top of the dial. And I think that's a very cool touch and not something you see commonly. As far as the loom, this has a nice application of BGW9 applied to the handset as well as to the markers. And then you do have that pip accent as well. On the production version, this is going to be kicked up. So I'm looking forward to that. I find that it um, performs, I think, reasonably as it is already. Um, however, certainly there's always room for improvement there. So I do look forward to them kicking that up. 
shifting over to the bezel, this has a traditional coin edge configuration. It is a little bit sharp, um, however not sharp to the hand, just has just the right amount of bite so you can easily grip a hold of that. And we'll check out the action here momentarily. As far as the style, you can see this is undercut, which I think visually helps to slim that out. It does have a polished accent underneath, which again complements that kind of brushed finish or that blasted finish that you have there. And I think that's incorporated well. As far as the insert itself, this is a stainless steel insert, and you can see it does have circular brushing uh, all the way around that. There is a slope to it. It's a very subtle slope. Um, however, I do think that that's visually more interesting than a flat would be, and then additionally that helps to kind of bridge the gap with that crystal to give that a nice flat overall aesthetic in effect. As far as the hashes, you can see it does have black hashes. These are without loom, and you have, for your first 15 minutes, your individual hashes in keeping with traditional dive styling, and then otherwise it's uh, in five-minute increments. At the 12 o'clock position, you do have that triangular pip, as well as that inlaid with the loom accent that's reminiscent of like a tritium vial. For the action itself, let's go ahead and listen to that. As you can hear, you know, it has a pretty tactile click to it. It is definitely what I would say on the lighter side. It's not to say too, uh, too soft or spongy by any means. It has a nice tactile click to it. However, it is probably a little lighter than I would personally prefer, but that's all, always going to be subjective there. Overall, I think that it is well done. One pass, let's go ahead and get that lined up. As far as the alignment itself, you can see this on this particular sample, at least, it is well aligned, doesn't have virtually any black pay, back play whatsoever, so I think that's well done there. And again, as we talked about, nice grip uh, on the side here, so easy to grab a hold of. Shifting over to the case. The case is a relatively flat profile. As you can see, it has a really subtle flow to that, so it does have a subtle downturn and curvature to it. However, overall, it is somewhat reminiscent of a flat, uh, flat or slab type uh, construction there. The lugs do come right down to the case back. So they are perhaps just a little bit proud of the, uh, the case back, but they're pretty close to flush. As far as the actual finishing on this, you can see it does have a nice kind of polished sandwich, which I think visually slims it out further. So you have a nice strip of brushing down the middle and then very heavily um, and well done polished accents. Let's go ahead and get some of those fingerprints cleaned off there and get a better look. But I've been really pleased with the, uh, the finish on this. The brushing is very clean and the polishing is actually well applied uh, as well. So I think that's nice and keeps it visually interesting there. Shifting over to the lugs, you can see that that carries through. So it has a relatively del delicate cut and shape or silhouette to the lugs. And then on the inside, similar to some we've seen in the past, like Zello's Swordfish, this does have an inner cut for that with another uh, another uh, chamfer or polished uh, facet there. So you can see that really helps to slim that out. Shifting over to the three o'clock side, you can see this has an integrated crown guard, and I think that's well incorporated also. And then that finishing is going to carry through with that. It's a nice touch. As far as the crown itself, this is coming in at 6.3 millimeters. As you'd expect for a dive style watch, this is a screw-in configuration. It carries through very nicely with the bezel finish, so you can see that that has a coin edge to it. Additionally, it is signed and has their nice raised crest there set against a brushed backdrop, so I think that's a nice touch as well. Shifting over to the case back, the case back, again, in keeping with the dive styling, is a screw-in configuration. They went with a very simplistic case back for this. So you have polishing on the exterior, and then you have just a linear brushing uh, on the interior. They went smooth so that you wouldn't have any potential for hot spots or anything along those lines, and then it does have basic text applied to it as well. Shifting over to the bracelet. The bracelet on this has an aggressive taper going from 20 millimeters down to, uh, at the lugs down to 16 millimeters at the clasp. The end links are female, so they have nice articulation there, and we'll look at that further. The finish is going to be uniformly brushing on all surfaces, and it's a nice linear brushing there, which I think keeps with kind of the tool aesthetic that you'd expect for a dive style watch. It is a three link or oyster configuration. The retention is held in with screws, and if you don't already have one, I'll have a link down to a nice uh, quality screwdriver to uh, adjust these. I do recommend you invest in a quality screwdriver. They're inexpensive and will uh, help to avoid future issues. On the production version, this is going to come with quick release spring bars, so they're not featured on this prototype. Um, however, that's a great uh, touch that they're going to incorporate that in. As we talked about, for the articulation, as you can see here, the drape, I think, is pretty solid. You know, the links are not overly long. They're smooth on the inside, so not really sharp there. Uh, so that adds to bracelet comfort. And then as you can see, it does drape nicely. So I think that's well done. 
The clasp itself, this is really one of the shining stars of this, and for being a debut offering, very impressed that they have this level of clasp. So the finishing itself I think is pretty nice. The thinness, it's really actually not too bad here as far as the total thickness, but this is where it's really thin. So only coming in at 16 millimeters. You have the double pusher, and you can see of course the signature there, nice and cleanly applied for, uh, for their branding. It has a milled bridge on the inside, but really what makes this impressive is check this out. It does have a toolless micro adjust. This is going to be your typical push button style. So this is ratcheting here. So as we pull that out, you can push that in without uh, having to, uh, to push that. So you can do this on wrist uh, to, uh, to kind of tighten things up, but that's excellent functionality, something that I always enjoy. And this I think is one of the cleaner executed variants. It's reminiscent of the newer RZE uh, style that are available, which again, with a tie in to the RZE brand. On the production version, they might incorporate kind of a, a push uh, text there just to make sure that people are aware that it does have this functionality. So that's excellently done. All right, so now that we have a better feel for the watch, let's go ahead and bring in a few comps for different reasons. We're going to check out a variety of white watches just so you can get an idea as far as the true coloration of this. So here it is next to a Dorenzo Mondial. And as you can see, this one is a true pure white and it is, uh, you know, a satiny or matte uh, kind of texture there. And this gives you an idea. You can see a little bit of that off-white kind of coloration. And then this being 40 millimeters with a fixed bezel gives you an idea as far as sizing of how those compare. Next up, this is bringing a smaller 40 millimeter, and this one is a full loom dial. This is the Zelos Horizons GMT, and you can see here just kind of difference. So this is with a BGW9 for the full loom dial. Again, gives you a different idea or it gives you an idea of the current color uh, for this. And then here is something that I hope they kind of go with um, finish-wise. So this is the Revolot Hex Mariner 39. As you can see, this is kind of a pearlescent. So when they say frost, I'm to be honest with you, I'm not certain what to expect as far as shade. So I would love to see more of that. This is something I hope they go with though. I really personally like this a lot. It has that kind of pearlescent effect to it. You can see the coloration isn't altogether that dissimilar, but to me, when I think of frost, this is more what I think of. And I think that would complement that dial texture so nicely. So I hope that's the direction that they head with that. And this is, again, as far as sizing wise, that's a 39 to give you an idea there as far as comparison. All right, so now that we have all of that out of the way, hopefully you have a better feel for this watch and whether it's one that's uh, of interest to you, but let's go ahead and wrap things up with my personal view of the positives, some critiques, as well as the overall summary so you can make your final decision before this campaign ends. As far as the value, we didn't talk about the pricing. It's coming in at $399, and I've got to say, that's pretty excellent. Sapphire Crystal, that Miyota 90 S5, even if it was a 9015 or 9039, I think that would be a lot of specs for the money, especially with having like that toolless micro adjust, you know, quick release spring bars. It's pretty feature packed for what you're getting, so that's excellent. The Overall layout, personally, I like it a lot. You know, obviously this is always going to be subjective, but I think the dial texture is nicely incorporated. It's not too in your face, but it really makes it visually interesting. And I think it incorporates well with each of the color options that are available. I think each of them accent it well. My personal favorite is that light blue, but drop me a comment. Let me know which one you like the best. And that uh, actually seems to be the most popular now as well. As far as the finishing, the finishing is excellent. You know, for uh, especially the $400 price point, Everything has been very clean. You know, the brushing is clean. The bezel action, as we talked about, um, that's, uh, I think, pretty well done. The case finishing is pretty exceptional. The uh, use of components there, excellent as well. So you're really getting a heck of a lot for a $399 price point. The clasp, you know, we've already talked about this extensively, but I've got to specifically mention here, it's excellent. It's one of the better clasps that's available, but mainly having that toolless micro adjust, um, that's really good. As far as the critiques though, there's really just a few items that I have for this and a lot of these are preference based. First is going to be the overall case profile. As we talked about, it's relatively flat. It reminds me somewhat of the Notice uh, Sector series where the case is a little bit thick and a little bit flat. But the biggest reason for that, uh, as far as for my preference or my preference against in the critique area, sorry, hitting the camera there. As you can see, on my six and a half inch wrist, a little tight eh, uh, with the uh, tool adjust there. But as you can see, what ends up happening is you get kind of this ledge effect with the bracelet and the way that that drops. And we saw that earlier in the footage as well. That's something for me, you know, I don't know what, whether it would need a little more curvature there or, you know, the difference in the, the uh, placement as far as, um, the uh, holes in the lugs or uh, having a male end link, you know, something I, that just is one of those kind of pet peeves for me of the way that that drops down. I'm never really too uh, crazy about that. And this is no exception here. 
As far as the uh, bezel action, as we talked about, I think it's already well dialed in and nice. It is a little bit lighter than I personally prefer, but again, that's going to be a subjective um, piece. You might like it as it is because I do think it's well dialed in, but I would like it to be a little heavier. And then again, just another preference-based uh, item. This, for me, currently, with having the full stainless construction, the stainless bezel insert in this white dial, so this is specific to this sample, I find it to be a little bit monochromatic. It doesn't wash out, and overall, I think it's a good look. I'm hoping that when they go over to the frosted color, that will add a little more contrast in there, but I don't think you have that with the other variants as well. So again, that's specific to this, and that, of course, is very much a preference-based uh, item, but I would like to see a little more differentiation, whether it be a different bezel insert. I like the stainless look, but on this particular one, I think that could benefit from uh, some more accent and contrast there. So where does that leave us at the end of the day for this? I'm going to say this is incredibly impressive for a first offering from a, from a brand. And of course, it's from folks that are established in the industry. So I guess it shouldn't be that surprising. But this really is a heck of a lot of watch for $400. Everything is pretty well dialed in. And there's really not a whole heck of a lot that I can complain about. Hence, with the critique section, really just being preference-based items. So I definitely encourage you to uh, give this one a look before the campaign ends if you like the style and it's one you think you might be interested in. So there you have it. I hope this video has been enjoyable for you. If you did like it, as always, give that like button a tap. And if you haven't already done so, smash that subscribe button. Most importantly though, I want to hear what you think. Drop me a comment. Let me know. Do you like the styling of this? Which color is your favorite? All that kind of good stuff. Thanks for watching.